Hey, what is going on guys? It's another vegan back with another video on day 15 of my 30 day challenge. We are now 15 days in, we are halfway in and my hair is falling out little by little but and today I wanna talk about something very important and it's called making your drums unique and honestly this can be that one thing that makes you stand out from all the other producers that everyone else is listening to. And before we start anything else, if you guys haven't already subscribed, go ahead and click that red button down below. If you guys haven't followed me on social media, another VGN across all platforms, you guys know what to do. And if you guys have any video suggestions, let me know in the comments below. We still have 15 days left to go. We're going strong. And with that being said, let's go straight into FL Studios and let's work on our drums. All right guys, now that we're in FL Studio, let's go ahead and talk about very simple things that we can do and when i mean simple i mean dead simple like pretty much this is the rule think about what everybody else does think about what sh what you normally do and now take that and try to change it just a little bit just a little bit just enough or change it a lot depends on what you want to do but that's kind of the the rule of thumb that i i follow so just for example I'm gonna go ahead and just play this uh, little clip of this beat. If you guys wanna hear this beat, I'll put a card up somewhere on the top left or right. I'm not sure, it's kinda of flipped anyway, it doesn't matter. So here's what the beat sounds like. Now I wanna point out a couple of things that I did or I can do to make this drum pattern sound just a bit different. All right, so for example, a lot of people put the open hat right at the beginning of the bar. And that is cool, but let's remember, that's what people usually do. So what I did was I moved it over and placed it on the second 808. So not only do you get that first kick when the bar starts, but when that second 808 comes in, you get another kick with the open hat. So. For example, if I would have had it in the beginning, you would have had that impact right in the beginning, but that second 808 kind of seems underwhelming. But if I go back and place it where I do have it, you have that first kick right there. Now, immediately that second hit of that 808 seems more impactful just because I placed the open hat on the second one and not the first one. All right, so the second thing I wanna talk about is your kick and your 808 relationship. So what I have to say is you don't really have to have your kick and your 808 hit at the same exact time. What I like to do honestly is I like to kinda of have like a delayed kick effect. So on the first three 808 hits, let's go ahead and just solo those out, right? It's pretty normal, but towards the end of that bar, I have the kick hit after the 808. You're gonna hear the kind of regular, uh, traditional kick and 808 hit at the same time, and then right at the end of the bar, you'll kind of get that stuttering effect. So right here. All right, so those are two examples that I have and I implemented into this beat alone. Now I wanted this beat to be very simple, so I didn't do too much after that, but I'm gonna talk about other things that I could have done. So let's talk about the hi-hats. So for this beat, I kept a very simple two-step hi-hat, nothing really special to be honest. But now what I could have done was I could have added multiple hi-hats to give the entire beat a different rhythm. Uh, now I'm gonna go ahead and create an entire new hi-hat pattern real quick. Let's just go ahead and play the beat with the first hi-hat pattern and then play with the second one. So here's what it sounds like with the first one. Now let's go ahead and take that one out and enter the second hi-hat pattern. And let's move this out the way so we guys can see. So we guys, what the fuck am I talking about? Now, if you want those hi-hats to stand out a little more, we can go ahead and raise the volume. Yeah. 
And now that we got the hi-hats out the way, I want to talk about one more tip that I feel like a lot of people don't do, and that is just sampling your drums, honestly. And what I mean by sampling your own drums is go ahead and make your drum pattern as you would normally do, but now you can go ahead and record that, take it into Fruity Slicer, mess with it, and come up with something completely different. I'm going to go ahead and go into Fruity Slicer, take one of the 808s, and reverse it. So now what we have is... And let's go ahead and listen to that new sampled 808 pattern. much it those are the tips that i have for you guys today if you guys like this video if you guys felt like you learned something drop a like and let me know what you felt about this video if you guys liked if you guys didn't if you guys have any video suggestions let me know in the comments below if you guys haven't already subscribed go ahead and click that red button down below if you haven't followed me on social media another vgn across all platforms and that's pretty much it thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys tomorrow bang